creo que es la aplicación. Porque... Sí, porque el es, teacher también. Si no y, es la de, y, él, y es la de él directamente. Mm -hmm. Here I am. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I really don't know what's I really don't know what's going on. Uh well apparently Zoom just got me out of the session. So it's it might be a problem, it might be something because I'm I mean it is actually the first time that I have this situation, but I have some other students in other classes which are experimenting the same type of situation. So it's like you're you're in the class, but for any other reason, the Zoom app gets you out of the of the class. So it, that's that's really weird, actually. But here I am. So we're back. So I was asking questions regarding to the phrasal verbs. So we had the two sentences actually. So I would like to know which one do you think is the right answer? Do you guys have any idea about it? Are you are you listening to me? That's my yes, teacher, but yes, yes. Yeah. why question? Oh, Oh, which this, question? It disappeared. Well, let me grab the demo again again because they they I think they disappeared once I, I got it. Teacher. And, uh, yes. The, the two oraciones, no recuerdo cómo se dice. Sentences. Por, sentences for me, the correct is number one. She she gave up three months ago because grab is a exception. Eh, si no me equivoco, que no se puede separar. No sé si recuerdo mal o, o estoy en lo correcto. Okay, so the first one it was she gave up three months ago, right? That was the first one. What was the second? One? I don't have it right here. Can someone tell me? Do you have them, Sonia? Sorry. Do you have number two? Number two. She she gave her class up up last year. Gave her class up last year. Last year. Okay. So there we have it, Vilma. So we have the those two examples before uh, Zoom got me out. So I was asked to all of them if which one or which one do you consider is the best option that we have when it comes to the phrasal verb give up, which is the best option or which one do you consider is the best one out of those two. So Sonia already gave her opinion and she said that she thinks that option number one or sentence number one is the best option. So that's what the, what she thinks. But what about the other ones? What do you guys think? I think number one. Number one too. Yes. What about you, Maximo? What do you think about those two sentences? Number one. Why do you consider number one is the best option for you? Check it up. Why do you consider is number one is the best option for you? I consider, but. Do you hear me? Yeah, I'm listening to you. I don't know what's going on, guys. Is, is it just me or are we still having the same situation we had yesterday? No, teacher, I listened to you clear. 
Oh, so that's that might be something else. I really don't know. I think that we have to work. Do we have to work on this on this app? Because it's it's not working. Something is going on by there that is not working. So well, we're going to try to do something different because this part is actually is not working though. So let me let me try to go to another part just to verify if you guys remember a little bit about it. So uh, if I have the fry silver throw away, throw away. If I have that fry silver, can I separate that or not? Throw away. Can I separate it? Not teacher. Not teacher. Not teacher. I cannot. So I cannot say I will. See, let me write that down. So oh, I cannot say something like that because you're telling me that I cannot separate it, so I cannot say something like that. Can I or I can't? I can't. Uh, you can you no, you can't, can't teacher. You can't teacher. Okay, so you can separate it. Yeah, so it means that we can separate it. Why? Because if we say something like, I will throw the ball away, that will be perfect. So now let me ask you another question. Can I change the noun ball for an object pronoun? Can I do that? Yes or no? If your answer is yes, please write on the chat which object pronoun do you think that we can use to omit the word the ball? Are you guys understanding today? It's like it's like we yes, did you. <laughs> it's like we're here, but we're not think? here. <laughs> es como que estamos agarrando <laughs> señal, verde. Está lloviendo, quizás, y estamos ahí con el cerebro que entre quiero estar it's aquí. Cold, I know, I know it's cold, and probably you don't want to be in the class. I understand that, and uh, I will throw it away. Okay, Nancy. So, so Nancy, you're telling me that you think that we can omit a throw, I will throw the ball, away the ball. We'll throw away the ball, okay. We have some examples there. Thank you very much for that, Nancy and Damaris. What about the other ones? Can you guys also give me your example or do you consider that the ones that we have here are, are the best options that we can have? Am I talking to myself today? <laughs> no, teacher. No, pero. Uh, um, you said about throw. Throw. If throw, I, I omit for other. No, I. Word. My question was, what can the first question was? Yes. I omit or can I use? an object pronoun to omit the word the ball. If I can, I wanted you to tell me which object pronoun can I use to omit it, but only if your answer was just yes to the first question. It. It. Why it? Because, because the ball is, is a thing. The ball is a thing. And so now you're telling me that the object pronoun it, we use it for things? Is that what you're telling me? Yes. Okay. ¿Qué pasaría 
si ahorita mismo hacemos el examen. About Freiselbergs. Do you remember that I said yesterday about an exam? Yo quedo totalmente punchada, teacher. With the yeah. zero. Claro culpable. <laughs> okay. Now, we are going to have a brief evaluation right now. No. Because I see, I see some of you are there like not understanding or I don't know if you understood, but I mean, I one of the favors that I want to ask you is that if you do not understand, tell me. So I will try to help you to guide you through so you can understand a little bit. Or if there's some doubts, if there's some comments, is if there's some regrets, let me know so I can help you to understand that. So before we start today's class, do you have any question regarding to the last topic or the, about the topic that we saw yesterday? It looks like it was not clear at all. Some of you got some things, some of you didn't. So that's my question. You see, when I ask you about questions, nobody says anything. So I take your silence as a yes. So I always take your silence as, okay, I understood. So that's why I, mean, I consider that you understood even though you didn't. So we're going to a brief, uh, let me see, a brief practice right now. I don't know if you have your notebook. <laughs> You have your notebook there with you, yes. a pen or pencil? Yes. yes. Perfect. So I need everyone to have a pen or pencil next to you because we are going to have a brief, uh, um, a brief practice, which I will request you to send me a picture after we finished. Because that picture, I will check after, before or tomorrow, I will check that. Based on that, I will verify if you were able to understand or if you didn't. Okay? Are we clear? <laughs> okay. So let's try to verify, okay? So now, I need you guys to write one sentence using the fry cell verb take off take off and i will write it down take off vamos a utilizar we are going to use phrasal verbs que vimos ayer cuidado con utilizar los mismos porque por eso íbamos diciendo qué significaba para que ustedes tuvieran una idea sí teacher what does mean takes off What's the meaning of take off? Does any one of you remember about yesterday? Tengo memoria de 10 segundos. <laughs> so take off is like, uh, I told you yesterday, like you shirt and someone tells you take it off. What's that? Quitar. There you go. Yes. So that's, I need you to make or to create one sentence using the phrasal verb take off. Did you do that already? We just have one minute and I need you to be honest first with you and then with your knowledge. Why? When I tell you be honest, it's because I want you to write something in your own. I don't want you to go to Google and try to search for some information in Google. No, try to create it by yourself without everyone else's help. I mean, I mean those are good examples, but writing on your notebook, guys on your notebooks, because then you're going to send me a picture of that. So we had the first one. Now let's move on to another one. 
And let me see if you remember that. So let's go to another phrasal verb. And now we're going to go with a phrasal verb, take after. I will write it on the chat so you have any idea about what I'm talking about, okay? So take after. Remember that you just have one minute to complete one sentence. I mean, do not complicate that much. You just have to do it, write it on your notebook, and then that will be it. Now, I think that we had enough. Now we're going to go to another one. And we're going to go to the next phrasal verb, which is look forward to. Look forward to. I'll write it on the chat too, so you have an, an idea of what I'm talking about. And the last one that we are going to have is go back on. Remember those phrasal verbs, guys, are phrasal verbs that we saw yesterday. So, I mean, it shouldn't be that difficult for you just to make those, I mean, to, to create a simple sentence. I mean, I don't want you to create like very detailed sentences or no, it's like a simple sentence only using those phrasal verbs. That's it. Are you guys working on that? Are you guys having any issue? Any problem, any situation going there, comments, regrets? Teacher, I have a question. Uh, this last one, se dice último, verdad? The last one, yeah. The last one sentence, uh, no, Frats, is going or go? No, I mean, the one is go back on. But you can use it, you can conjugate the verbs in different tenses. Lo puedes conjugar en diferentes tiempos. So you can say went, si quieres hablar del pasado, went back on, going back on, have gone back on. So lo puedes conjugar en todos los tiempos. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, so that's that's enough time, guys. We had enough time. So just show me what you have or send, take a picture of what you have right now in your notebooks and send the picture through the WhatsApp group like right now, okay? If you didn't finish, okay. If you finished, okay, that's fine. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because I want you or I want to verify if you understood 
what we saw yesterday. I know fry cell verbs can be a little bit complicated, so I completely understand that. So send me what you have. I just received one already. So what about the other ones? We are 17 on the call. So I suppose I'm going to get 17 pictures. So they were just four sentences. Okay, I got another one right now. I got another. Okay. All right, I got some other. Thank you very much. So while you're sending the picture, I'm going to share the screen with you and try to verify or try to explain you a little bit about the topic that we are going to, to do today. We are not going to do the exam due to the reason that I see that you are not ready yet. So my suggestion for you is to study as much as you can because next week, specifically on Thursday, we are going to have the evaluation or uh, exam. We're gonna call it exam, okay? So I need you to be ready for that day because that is going to be our last day in class. Today, as you can see, is our 12th class, which means that we have only four more classes and we are going to be done with this module. Okay. All right. Any question that you may have? No. Okay. So I will take once again your silence as to no. So we're going to go with a part of the prepositions and I will need a volunteer to help me reading a brief definition about what a preposition is or what are prepositions. Claudia, thank you very much. Let's go, Claudia. Preposition, preposition are a word which are used before a noun, a noun, uh, this is pronunciation, noun? Noun, noun. Noun, frasal, frasal? Phrase. Phrase or a pronoun, pronoun. Connecting, then do another word. Okay, basically what we're saying there, thank you so much, Claudia. Basically what we're saying there is that prepositions are small words or words that are going to help us to connect two things or to connect two phrases, to connect uh, pronouns or to connect these small words with another word to create something different, okay? Prepositions, we have a variety of prepositions, so we are going to go one by one today and we are going to try to understand the different type of prepositions that we have in the English language. So we are going to go, let me see. We have kinds of preposition. We have simple preposition and we have compound preposition. So I will need a volunteer to help me reading simple preposition, please. Go ahead, Elizabeth. Sim simple prepo preposition. Preposition with which cons consist only one word. Mm -hmm. e, e, e point G point E on uh -huh. at with against uh -huh. or against 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 etc. etc. Et <laughs> okay, every single time cada vez que ustedes vean estas letras e g significa o is the abbreviation for example, in English, okay? Oh, okay? Every single time that you see EG, keep in mind that you, they are trying to, we are trying to say example. 
So in the simple propositions, thank you very much for your participation, Elizabeth. We have some examples there. We have the preposition in, on, at, with, against, etc. Okay, those are part of the simple prepositions that we have. Sonia, would you like to help me reading compound prepositions? Okay. Compound preposition. Preposition which consists of two or more words. Example, inside of, in the middle of, be the side of. Okay. Thank you very much. So as the name it says, compound prepositions, preposiciones compuestas, we call it in that way because we have two or more words which are going to create a compound preposition, which is going to help us to connect a phrase, to connect a noun, or to connect those words with another word to give a different meaning or to help in grammar. So as the examples that we have there, we have instead of, in the middle of, by the side of, etc. So we are going to go one by one today and we are going to try to understand the variety or the types of prepositions that we have in the English language. So we are going to start here with some examples, some other examples in general. In this part, we have different types of prepositions. We have a variety. So what I'm going to do is that I am going to read them all. You, you just have to pay attention to the pronunciation and then try to pronunciate them at home. It's not necessary for you to turn your microphone on. You can practice right there at home. While I'm reading it, then you can read it by yourself and you can also practice there. So we're going to go with the first one, on, on who, through, this is through, through, through behind, for, for, beneath, beneath against, against, beside, beside over, over during, during without, 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 road, broad, across, across, across among, among, against, against, against around, around, at the end, at the end, at the bottom, at the bottom, at the bottom between, between, behind, behind below, below, by, below, inside. inside Corner, corner into, into via, via after, after to, to about, about in on at in on at since, at since since while while under under over over, over, right, right and left. Right, left, left. So as right. you can see there, we have a variety of uh, prepositions. Some of them are not commonly used when we speak, but it's also very important that you know them or how to use them. So these are general examples before we go to the topics or the different types of prepositions that we have. Now, do you guys have any question with these prepositions that we have right here? Do you understand them all? Please sure. repeat, what is the meaning, Bennett? Beneath, beneath, beneath <laughs> it's, yes, it's beneath. like por debajo, beneath. Or the bajo, beneath. That's the meaning of beneath. Any other? Vaya. It's it's it. That's the 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 or the meaning of that one. It's like pretty much the same one that we have like in Spanish. 
it's like entre dos cosas. Like, vaya. That's, that's the meaning of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about the other ones? Do you have any question or we can move to the next slide? Teacher, vaya uh, is same, same uh, between. Es igual o es lo mismo que between? I mean, they have the same meaning, but they are not the same thing. I mean, uh, they are synonyms. We call in English synonyms. Synonymous, palabras que significan lo mismo, pero las utilizamos en diferentes contextos. Different contexts. Okay. Thank you, teacher. Okay. So if there's no other questions, so I will move on to the next part. So later on, we are going to have some examples using some of these propositions that we have on this chart. So later on, we're going to have some examples in which you are going to be able to see them all. So here we have, what are the types or kinds of prepositions that we have? We have three. We have a place of prepositions or we can also call them prepositions of place. We have time of prepositions, or we can also call prepositions of time. We have direction of prepositions or prepositions of direction. So those are the same thing. Remember, we just have three types of prepositions. So we are going to go one by one and we're going to try to understand how to use them. Because sometimes, or we have probably seen them in readings and the internet and the social media, but we don't know how to use them. So we are going to go first with the prepositions of time. And today we are going to focus on three main prepositions at, in, on. Now, here we have. When we use this type of prepositions, guys, there's something that you need to remember. Even though some of them look kind of similar and we probably, or we would probably think that we are going to use them in the same situation, let me tell you that no, each one of them has its own way or its own form where you are going to use them when it comes to grammar. So we are going to start with the first one, which is at. Every single time that you have to use a preposition at is because you are going to be talking about a precise time or precise place, precise situation, or something specifically you're talking about. For example, what time do we have the class? If I ask you the question, what time do we have the class? What would you answer to that question? At eight o'clock. At eight o'clock. At eight o'clock. Excellent. So we some something else. Otra cosa. Um, if you want to speak professional English. It's important that you give complete answers. Es importante que demos respuestas completas. Like, for example, I asked you, like, what time does class start? ¿A qué horas empieza la clase? Y todos dijeron automáticamente at 8 o'clock. That's fine. I mean, ese lenguaje es entendible, pero es lenguaje de la calle. ¿Qué significa eso? Cuando decimos language of the street, nos referimos a aquel lenguaje que es hablado común y corriente por todas las personas nativas del idioma. But if you want to speak or if you want to sound professional, si ustedes quieren hablar un inglés profesional, tenemos que dar respuestas largas o respuestas completas. What am I, why am I saying this or why do I refer to when I say that? ¿A qué me refiero cuando digo esto? If I ask you the question, si les pregunto... What time does the class start? Alguien por ahí escuché que me dijo the class start at 8 o'clock. So, esa es una respuesta completa. So, yo digo the class start at 8 o'clock. Why? Because the question that I asked you had all that information involved. So, if you tell me at 8 o'clock, 
of course I'm going to understand what you're saying because that's also English, but it's not professional English. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to tell you. Yes, I understood, teacher, but sometimes it's uh, necessary to speak, how you say, fluency. There are people who need to hear contracts uh, answer mm. sometime. Yes, mm -hmm. because uh, you, uh, uh, you make a short answer, mm -hmm. you continue to speak about the, every topic. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's understandable. I, I guess I didn't make myself clear. I, I was. Oh, yes, you understand the, you say uh, uh, if you want to speak um, professional language, mm -hmm. but we are learning, we are learning. Yeah. Uh, if you listen uh, some conversation about uh, in the street, you listen the words that we can know but the idea we can get it yeah yeah i mean you're completely right and i completely what you're trying to say i mean that's why i was not i was uh, i was saying that it that is not that is not correct i mean i wasn't saying that is not correct yes you see okay. their or it will be up to you i mean if you want to speak like in that way, I mean, it's fine. As I said, it's understandable. Everyone is going to understand if you said at eight o'clock. Okay, that's fine. But I mean, there's uh, there's some professionals we are going to have okay. who are going to speak you in that way. You have to try to speak or to understand both of them, both ways. Okay. Okay, so now, as I was saying, we're going to use the preposition at when we want to talk about a precise time or something specifically. So we have some examples here at three o'clock, at 10.30 a.m., at noon, at dinner time, at bedtime, at sunrise, at sunset, or at the moment. So when we use all of them, we're talking about a precise time or something specifically that's go or that's it is going on in the situation or the context we want to talk about. Then when we go to the proposition of time in, Sometimes we tend to confuse in and on. And when we are learning English, sometimes we confuse them. And we use in when we don't have to use in and we use on when we don't have to use on. So now every single time that you use in is because we're talking about months, years, decades, centuries or seasons okay so that's the time or in those situations is when you are going to have to use the preposition of time in and we have some examples here in may in summer in the summer in 1990 in the 1990s in the next century in the ice age, in the past or in the future. So as you can see here, we're we're just like kind of speaking about months, years, decades, centuries and seasons. So we have to keep that in mind, okay? So now how do I differentiate between in and on? Very easy, because on you are, you are only going to use it when you refer to the days of the week and when you talk about dates for example when you want to say your the date where you were born you say it, i was born on 19 uh, march or 18 march 1997 something like that so every single time that you talk about days and the specific dates you will have to use a preposition of time on so we have on sunday on tuesday on 6 march on 25th December 2010, on Christmas Day, on Independence Day, on my birthday, on New Year's Eve. Okay, so uh, another thing, guys, I don't know if you knew, but in English, when we say or when we mention a year, 
usually we tell them to buy two because Americans love to use contractions. So sometimes they don't want to speak too much, so they use contractions. When I say contractions, I don't mean like short answers. Contractions are grammatical things that we contract between one word to another to make it easier or to make it uh, shorter. So every single time that you that you mention a year, keep in mind that you will read it to a, like two and two. So if we have 1996, how would you say that in English? 1996. 1996. 1996. Yeah, that's the way that we have to do it. I mean, uh, some people will probably say it 1996. And I mean, that's understandable too. But as I said before, Americans love or the way that they usually do it is two by two. So every single time that you have a number or that you are going to say a number, keep in mind that you will read it two plus two. That's the way that you will always have to do it. So according to these three uh, prepositions of time, do you have any questions so far? Not the chair. No, let's move on then. Here we have some examples and I would like to have Luis for the first one, Claudia for number two, Elizabeth for number three, Juan for number four, Maximo for number five, uh, Vilma number six, uh, Sonia number seven, Rosemary number eight, and Emperatriz number nine. So let's go, please. Okay. I have a meeting at 9 a.m. Thank you very much. Number two. The shop closes at midnight. Thank you very much. Jane went home at lunch time. Okay. The next one. Juan. Juan, are you there? Hello? I think he's not there. So, Vilma, then. Okay. In England, it often snows in December. Thank you. Sonia, can you help me with the next one? Do you think we will go to Jupiter in the future? To Jupiter. Jupiter in the future. Okay, thank you very much, Rosemary. There shall be a lot of progress in the next century. Century, okay, thank you very much. Emperatriz, help me with the next one, please. Do you work on Monday? Thank you. Damaris, help me with the next one. Her birthday is on 20 November. Okay, Nancy, help me with the last one. Where will you be on New Year's Day? On New Year's Day. Okay, those are just examples in which we are using the three uh, prepositions of time that we already saw. So we're just going to move on to the next part, which are the prepositions of place. So we are going to, oh, here we have just some examples, under, over, and inside. Of course, there's a lot more, and we are going to have a list of those so we can understand. So here we have the most common prepositions of time, and we have uh, small images there, which are going to help you to kind of understand when we have, uh, when we are using those prepositions. As you can see, it can be a little bit tricky too. Why? Because we are repeating, estamos repitiendo una vez más in and on. Why? Because those prepositions can be used for prepositions of time, but they can also be used for prepositions of place. 
So you might be wondering, or you could ask yourself, so how am I going to understand how to use them as a prepositions of place? And how am I going to understand how to use it as preposition of time? Very easy. When we say preposition of time, it's obviously because we're talking about time and we are going to use them as prepositions of place when we are obviously talking about the position of something or anything in, in the context or the place where we are going to put something. Uh, so that's why we are once again using the preposition in and on. As you can see, the preposition in, it will be when we have something in, inside or into the something. So here we have the small images that are going to help us to kind of understand what each one of them means. So we have in, on, under, next to, behind, in front of, and between. So do you guys understand them all or do you want me to explain you something? Did you understand what I talked about in and on? Was that clear? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, teacher. Okay. So if that's clear, so we're going to move on to some examples and we are going to have some others here. As you can see, we have the prepositions of place are not only the ones that we just saw, those are some examples, but we have some others here. Why? Uh, it says that some prepositions show where something happens. So they are also called prepositions of place. Why? Because they are showing you where something happens. So that's what we have to understand. And that's what is going to help us to understand when we have to use prepositions of place. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six examples. I will need volunteers. Me. Okay, Vilma, thank you very much. Or who, who was that, Claudia? Was that you? Yes. Okay, Claudia, thank you. Let's go with the first one. Sunny was sitting under would you like to to repeat it again sonia <laughs> sorry <laughs> there's a wooden 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 Floor mm -hmm. under underneath the underneath carpet. the carpet under underneath the carpet. the carpet. Okay, so we we understand what under means, right? We all understand the meaning of under, right? What's under? Abajo, abajo. Abajo o debajo en nuestro, nuestro vocabulario, right? Debajo. Debajo. Mm -hmm. So, what about underneath? Do you guys have any idea about the meaning of underneath? No. So, underneath also means abajo o debajo. So as you can see there, both of them are kind of similar. So that's why we call them, uh, they, they are synonyms. So how are you going to differentiate between under and underneath? Or how are you going to know when to use one or when to use the other? When we use under, it's because there's something which is above you. Estamos under cuando hay algo que está encima de usted. Arriba, más alto. Y usted está abajo. So there we have to use under. The difference with underneath, la diferencia con underneath, es que usted está encima de algo. Y debajo de eso que usted está encima, a esa acción o a esa cosa le podemos decir underneath. For example, in the example that we have here, Dice, there's a wooden floor, hay un piso de madera debajo de 
la alfombra. Uh -huh. So as you can see, we are above, estamos encima de la alfombra. So that thing, it's underneath. So that's the difference when we are going to use under and underneath. Is that clear? Yes, teacher. Oh my God. Okay, so number three. Uh, Arnoldo, would you like to help me with number three? Okay. Some GC. Mm -hmm. Some GC flew over their house. Some G's flew over their house. Do you have any idea, guys, about the meaning of over? Sobre, teacher. Sobre o encima. Over o es, es sobre o encima. So, now let's go with the next example. Vilma, would you like to help me reading that? Okay. John and Sarah were hiding inside the, um, the wardrobe. The, war the wardrobe. Wardrobe. Okay. So... I think that we all know what's the meaning of inside, right? Inside, dentro, o adentro. That's the meaning of inside. So what about the next example, Rosemary? Rosemary, can you help me? Yes, yes. John and Sarah? No, this one, the next one. Mm -hmm. There was a tree beside the river. Beside the river. So what about beside? Do you guys know what beside means? Al lado de. Al lado de, o a la par, beside. So the next example, I would like to have... Uh, Luis, would you like to help me with the last example? I have a friend who lives in America. Okay, thank you very much. So those are example guys about prepositions of, uh, of place. And now we're going to go to the last ones which are prepositions of direction. When we say prepositions of directions, it's obviously those prepositions, prepositions, I'm sorry, that people are going to use when they want to help us to give us some kind of direction where we're moving or if we are going to another place or if we're moving to uh, from a point A to a point B, people is going to use those prepositions to help us to understand where something is located. So I will read those prepositions. So you just pay attention to the pronunciation and probably I will ask you later on about the pronunciation of any of them, okay? So we have the first one that is above, across, along, among, around. We have at, behind, below, beside, close to, over, through, toward, up, down, between, by, inside or in, near, next to, on, off, past, and under. Uh, as you can see, guys, the preposition in, on, and beside, and some others that we have here, they are kind of repetitive because we saw those in the uh, uh, prepositions of place, then we saw those in the prepositions of time too. And now with the preposition of direction, we still, they are still there. So uh, what's the difference between they both or how am I going to differentiate them from one to another? It's very simple. The context is going to give you the idea about what or how you will have to use them, okay? So do you guys have any questions so far or something that you would like me to repeat you again or to tell you again? 
for me not okay so uh unfortunately guys one hour is already done so remember to keep working on the platform tomorrow we are going to have calibration Calib sure. 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 yes for example in this case you can say the time is over we can use a a preposition for time yeah of course we can say time is over so yeah, we can say that so it's thank you for that example that's very useful so uh remember to keep working on the platform we have calibrations day tomorrow so tomorrow we are going to check if you have been working on the platform or not so you have to have the platform completed until section number four if you haven't please try to work today night or tomorrow morning so you don't have any problem at the end of the day okay so that's going to be all for today guys thank you so much for coming to the class and see you guys on Monday, okay? I hope Monday. weekend. See you on Monday. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.